Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Yeah, I was very busy just uh, doing Black Friday shopping. Yeah, that's where I got my uh, Blu-rays at Walmart. And I just relax all weekend. And just watching some movies and all that. And just working on the, the Christmas tree that we just bought. And just getting ready for it. So on. So everything's going great. I'm going to do a movie review this week. And I just watched this uh, last week. I was going to review it for a while, but I just wanted to take a break again. But I'm going to review it now. This is a movie I saw as a kid when I went to see it in theaters. It's called Fern Gilly. The Last Rainforest. Yeah, this is the Blu ray that I picked up uh, a year ago at Big Lots for only five bucks, and it was a good deal. And this is the one that has all the features, all ported from the Family Fun Edition, as you can see on the back right here. And yes. <laughs> has a different cover art with uh, Krista, the fairy, along with Zack and Betty Coda. <laughs> Same here. Uh, but I also have the DVD that I bought back in 2008, yeah, which the Family Fun Edition was already released at the time. But I was lucky to find this uh, for a lot less at Kmart, which had the original cover art exactly as the VHS tape and laser disc. I like this cover art better because it does show all the characters and you can even see Hexus and on the back. <laughs> but not enough features, just the trailer and and that's pretty much it. But hey it's it's cool that now I had an upgrade. Uh, this is exactly what it looks like here. <laughs> just a um, scene selection and just a flipper disc. Uh, so, it's great to have it. Uh, now, first time I saw this again, saw it in feeders as a double feature with Beethoven, but I guess you could say it's a triple feature because I went to see Sister Act first before I got to see these two films. I saw that at the Eagle Theater in Eagle Rock, which is now known as a church. Um, but it was a theater where you get to watch uh, double features of, of all these uh, second run movies for a lot less. So, but Thursday nights are always uh, the best time for that because they always cost uh, 50 cents. And then, but when you see it every day, it, it would cost like like around a dollar fifty or so, yeah. But it's cool. Uh, anyway, the story is about uh, an Australian rainforest that's filled with fairies and animals all around, and they're trying to protect their home from a a malevolent pollution entity known as Hexus. And this was at the time when, in the early nineties as opposed to the late 80s. They were focusing on trying to save the environment, so that's why they were coming up with movies and TV shows, such as Captain Planet and the Planeteers. Yeah, very corny superhero series. But hey, I, it did have a, a message right here. But whatever. And then we were getting some other stuff too to join in. But out of all that, Ferngelly The Last Rainforest uh, really taught me something um, without being too preachy over it. And yes, there's a sequel called The Magic Rescue that came out as a direct-to-video release in 1998. I wouldn't recommend that one because <laughs> that one's terrible. The animation has changed, looked like something out of a Saturday morning, weekday afternoon cartoon which is an insult to them. I really miss Saturday morning and weekday afternoon cartoons as it is. 
Um, plus, it didn't feature all the voice actors uh, from the original film. But it did manage to get uh, free voice actors who did Tenchi Muyo. Go figure. Uh, but this one features uh, Jonathan Ward from Steel Magnolias and <coughs> Mac and Me. <coughs> Sorry. That's my attention because that film sucks. I had Samantha Mathis uh, from Pump Up the Volume. Also from Pump Up the Volume, Christian Slater. He's been on the other stuff too. Uh, of course, you know, they were. Um, um, they had been in movies together and even as a, uh, a couple for a while. You also got Tim Curry. Cheese and Sean, yes, Cheese Marin and Tommy Chan, uh, Tony Law, and uh, Tony Locke, and of course, Robin Williams, the late great Robin Williams. And this was also considered to be his uh, first animated feature because after this, he went on to do Aladdin. Mostly because of Jeffy Katzenberg, because he saw the movie, he loved it so much that he wanted Rob Williams to be in Aladdin to do the voice of, of Genie. And it's cool. So, and what's interesting though was that it was going to be an eight minute role, but it suddenly got extended because, well, he had to do 14 minutes of improv just to provide it. And, so that's really cool, and this this was also produced by a company called FAI, which stands for um, Fire and All Insurance. Uh, it's an Australian insurance company, um, but this was uh, the movie that was produced by and got bankrupt uh, over the years. It was founded by Lawrence Adler. Uh, but they also got uh, Australian producers uh, Peter Failman and Wayne Young. And of course, this is based on the book by Diane Young with the same title. But it was brought in by Hoyer Films, yeah, run by Bill Hoyer, who's a Disney animator. Actually, bought um, a small team of animators. Which, interesting enough, uh, two years ago, before this film got released, they went on a trip to Australia just to discover the rainforest, and they actually had all the animators uh, sketch all the the drawings of of all the the trees and and the rest of the rainforest around. Even though, yes, there is uh, a bunch of leeches on the side, so to try to make it look more realistic than ever. So it's all hand drawn, but they managed to blend in with um, a mix of uh, ink and paint that's done all the way in, in Korea. So they had to spend like four countries uh, trying to uh, put them all together. Yeah, and then they hired the voice actors, and then, you know, so many teams just joined in, and the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. And of course, it has a nice soundtrack too to go with it. I mean, you got uh, Shinny Easton, uh, Elton John. Yeah, before he went on to do the soundtrack for The Lion King. You got Ralphie, uh, Johnny Clegg. Um, and yes, even, Rob, even both Tim Curry and Robert Williams uh, provided uh, their songs. Cool. Um, but it's definitely the, the perfect uh, 90s movie that we ever got. Uh, so let's uh, get to the review. Stars, once again, Samantha Mathis, uh, Jonathan Ward, Tim Curry, Christian Slater, Robert Williams, uh, Robert Pastorelli, Jeffrey Blake, Grace. Uh, Sabresky, uh, Cheese Mamran, Tommy Chong, Townsend Coleman, 
who's been known for doing all the voice acting of, of shows like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and The Tick, come to mind. Yeah, Danny Mann and Kathleen Freeman from the TV show uh, Lots of Luck, which starred uh, Dom DeLuise. It's written by Jim Cox, yeah, based on the book by Diane Young of the same name, uh, from Gully the Last Rainforest, and it's directed by Bill Coyer. The movie begins set somewhere in Australia. We discovered a wonderful, pristine rainforest known as Ferngully. That's where we meet a very young, but very curious fairy and also a girl named Krista, who's voiced by Samantha Mathis, who is just uh, basically uh, teaching how to learn all of her magical powers that she has and be able to control it, not to mention she'll become the next uh, the next big fame to save the rainforest if, from destruction by the appearance of a muttery figure fairy named Maggie Lane, who is voiced by uh, Grace uh, Sabresky. Anyway, it's um, it's a rainforest that's only run by fairies and animals with not a human in sight. Why? Because it had human extinction one time when they were living in harmony with them, only to be destroyed by an, a dark spirit entity known as Hexus, who's voiced by Tim Curry, who rises through the volcanic eruption and suddenly destroyed the entire rainforest, suddenly spreading all the fire and burning everything down, and none of the humans have survived. So then Maggi um, imprisoned Texas to become a tree. So now they no longer be harmed anymore. But one day Krista explored a new part of the forest where you know she actually went all the way up to the top of the canopy and that's where she spotted uh, black smoke that's rising up and there's like a huge flash that was happening of course we also meet uh, a fairy named uh, Pips who's voiced by Christian Slater it's very jealous but on the other hand you know He's been with her for a long time. And we also got the Beetle Boys. <laughs> yeah, Stump and Roots. All by Cheese Moran, Tony Chong. Uh, they also found uh, Batty Coda, who's a bat uh, that claimed to be experiment from humans. That's where he gets the antenna. It's like a TV antenna that's uh, injected into his head. And he's voiced by Robin Williams. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he does give it a bit of a cocky, unstable personality that he changes any time he, you know, you touch the, uh, the antenna. I also love his batty rap, too. Yo, my name is Bette. Thy logic is erratic. The potato in the jacket. The toys in the attic. I walk and I ramble. My brain is scrambled. I rap like an animal, but I am a mammal. That, that's what's funny about uh, Rob Williams because he just, you know, he just has fun, you know, improving and just, you know, creates the character exactly the way he does it. You know, I just really miss him. So, suddenly the fairies uh, believed him, well, except for Krista, who suddenly volunteers to investigate uh, throughout the entire forest, and that's when she spotted uh, a young city kid named Zack, who was voiced by Jonathan Ward, who was actually uh, working with the guys. You know, they, they had a machine called the Leveler that goes around cutting down trees so that way they can make uh, all these logs to turn into um, a stack of wood you know, so they can use it for home improvements, for houses and everything. Uh, yeah, the machine also has like a chainsaw, 
um, and robotics to control it and to cut down all the trees. Yeah, they also had to put a lot of um, X marks through a, a red spray can just so they could target it, all these trees. Um, but then Chris has suddenly uh, spots uh, Zach just when the tree was ready to fall down on him and then this is where she shrunk him. So now <laughs> he's already knocked unconscious, woken up, you know, he even, uh, he even took uh, his, uh, his wallet, she even took, um, yeah, Chris suddenly took his wallet and, and his uh, pocket knife. <laughs> Oh, and, and speaking of uh, that, you're going to love this, but if, if you look in, in his uh, identification, you can see a lot of pictures around, but there's actually one picture of Zach along with the two dogs that kind of resemble, you guessed it, Lady and, and the Tramp. <laughs> well, we all know that Bill Poirier is a Disney animator, so <laughs> I can see why. Uh, maybe because he also loved Lady and the Tramp, so he thought this would be a good uh, reference. Um, but it was like a Christmas photo. And, and then you see um, his work permits. Yes, he's from Australia. He's 5 foot 11, just like I am. And he's 16, so he's a teenager. So, <laughs> so anyway, he... So... Krista was trying to find a way to restore him to his normal size, but it seemed like it's not working very well. Of course, he's being picked up by uh, Batty, <laughs> just so they can escape, but of course, Batty was scared because it's a human right there. So then suddenly, the tree that Hexus has been imprisoned of is being cut down by Tony and Ralph, you know, the two guys that Zack is working with. You know, they were on the, the leveler machine. And that's when Hexus suddenly wants up going inside the machine directly from the the stack of boards. And yeah, that's where you get to see uh, the song Toxic Love <laughs> when he re when he reveals himself. Uh so during so after all of that, Zach is about to explore the entire rainforest with Krista, you know, getting to know each other, and they're trying to find Maggie to see if they could find a way to bring him back to his normal size. But yeah, they're just they're just having fun. Uh, Zach slowly discovers other other fairies to join in, yeah, like Pips, Beetle Boys, and Krista's fodder. Of course, Maggi. And this is when the Pips actually found his stereo. He has headphones, stereo. That's when they were playing the song. Uh, <laughs> na, 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 Yeah. So, uh, through the course, um, you know, Zach and, and Krista were just jumping into the water, you know, swimming and walking through one of these sprouts that he had, you know, jumping and to one, one to another and then they went up in the water. And it's very beautiful too. Very beautiful, very wonderful moment. Uh, and that's where you hear the Sheena Easton song in there. Then he carves uh, Chris's name on the tree and Chris's definitely warns them that you can actually feel uh, the tree's pain. Because um, also earlier though, he, he even actually showed the Krista with fire is. But uh, she, and she got uh, caught, you know, she had a cut. She got a cut for a while and then suddenly it just heals uh, her wound. And it actually goes straight into uh, Zack. Amazing. That's when we begin to discover the truth. 
behind the, the humans. So when Hexus suddenly arrives and started started to destroy the entire wing force using that machine, the leveler, to cut down all the trees, all the way down. So that's when the Zack decided to explain to them about what's happening, and why, and why uh, Hexus came back. Well, because the humans were working with them to, to cut down all the logs and everything. So now they're trying to find a way to escape, but then, with the help of Badgie, uh, she offered to help uh, Krista begin to use the, the single tiny seed to find a way to um, to make it grow by just to stop Hexus. Uh, there was a creepy scene though when Hexus um, just wondered about to stop the machine. Yeah, Zack, uh, with the help of a Batty, just came along just to go back to the machine and just to go inside just when the Hexus scared them off. Just when Hexus scared Tony and Ralph off, Zack suddenly tries to go inside with the help of Pips to join in to uh, turn off the, the leveler for a key. So then, Hexus suddenly becomes a skeleton, a creepy skeleton. So now, Krista, along with the rest of the fairies, decided to, uh, just like how Magic did it before, but this time, they're finally gonna, they're finally gonna stop him by imprisoning him into a tree, a giant tree this time. <laughs> but even better. So. so, afterwards, um, Krista finally reduced uh, Zack into his size. He gets to explain to Tony and Ralph about what happened and trying to figure out some new changes. Uh, Krista also gives uh, Zack the seed and he actually plants it so he'll always remember. And that's when Krista helped it grow by hearing uh, magic. So things were going back to normal again. And with uh, Krista, Pips, and of course Batty just are just going to the uh, going straight to Ferngully just to just ex explore and have fun. So. Yeah, it's definitely a wonderful film. No doubt about it. Uh, definitely uh, brings in a a uh, an actual. Me it does bring in a an environmental message on saving the rainforest from being destroyed. It really teaches something without getting too preachy over it. And I love that. I love the voice acting, especially Robin Williams. Uh, there were a lot of funny quotes coming from Batty Coda. Yeah, such as human tails, humans don't have tails. They have big, big bottoms that wear with bad shorts. They walk around going, "Hi, Helen," or, <laughs> or even when, <laughs> or even at times when, when he does change his personality, just, just as uh, Zach was uh, about to grab him just to escape, all the way back to the forest, uh, just so that. He can go back to the leveler. <laughs> yeah, he just says, What are you, crazy? That's Lemmy talk. And then he just hits the, the antenna saying, Run channel. <laughs> and and then he, he says, Then he was going for, Hail Caesar, Emperor of Rome. Run channel. Well, all right, Gundy. We're going to war. <laughs> Yeah, so he's imitating the. So he's imitating John Wayne, imitating the. <laughs> the soldiers of war. And then there's even the. A scene where it says, Don't go there, I said. Bad idea, but you will listen? No, don't listen to Batty. Well, what do we have here? 
Shoes? Animals don't wear shoes. A human! Or he always crashes into a tree saying, Rit light! Psh. Rit light again! <laughs> Wonderful characters that they got, especially Krista, who's very cute and just rebellious, but just trying to discover um, everything what she was about to do, even though she's not listening much. But she's trying to, her best to uh, control her magical powers. So she'll be able to get it right. Since I know magic's not going to be around forever. Uh, Pips, of course, is very jealous at times, but hey, that's how he is. Uh, the Beetle Boys are, are fun. You get the Iguana, who's voiced by Tony Locke. And I even love that song that he did, that rap song. It really works. Um, and also Maggi, who's definitely uh, a motherly nature uh, fairy, and trying, not to mention she's the one that's trying to save uh, Ferngilly from being destroyed by Hexes. And of course Hexes, uh, definitely a powerful villain destroy everything. And while it does sound repetitive, um, it's actually uh, a rightful message here that really teaches something about that destroying the rainforest is a bad idea. And that it's always good to protect it from, um, from not existing. And that is uh, for children's and for children's children. Yeah, at the end of the movie. So, so in other words, try to be kind with trees, with wonderful flowers all around, some beautiful uh, rainfalls, and uh, luscious colors of of, every, of all the plants everywhere. And of course, you get to see a lot of animals who are living there. Yeah. You won't see fairies, though. Unless it's in the movie. <laughs> but yeah. It just proves that, yeah, they should protect their home from being destroyed. So, no matter what. So that's the message. And help it make it grow with a single tiny seed. So no harm will be done. Now, I hate to bring this up too, but what really bothers me nowadays is when they accuse um, a movie called Avatar from 2009 that's written and directed by James Cameron to be, um, to be involved with plagiarism. So they seem like Avatar plagiarized uh, Ferngully, The Last Rainforest, along with Dances with Wolves. And to me, that's just bullshit. It really is. Because, as much as I love the movie, Avatar, I don't care what anybody says. I think they just use this argument just so they can hate this movie for life. That's not fair. So I just think people are just taking it way too seriously. I mean, no offense to people who don't like it, but that's fine. I know there's going to be sequels to that, but that's alright. But hey, it's my opinion, so I'm going to keep it that way. Uh, but nevertheless, um, I love Ferngully, The Last Great Forest. I, I still love it even to this day, after watching it. and uh, The transfer on the Blu-ray has grain in it, some scratchy uh, prints here and there. But otherwise, it still looks uh, beautiful and wonderful than ever. And I love the features that they put in, all of which were taken from the Family Fun Edition. Everything else. And, and um, love all the fun moments, all the crazy moments, and all the wonderful moments that they had in the film. And, 
even scary moments too to join in. <laughs> I even love some of the funniest dialogue, you know, just to make it more 90s, such as he's a bodacious babe, <laughs> or tubula, or whatever. But that's more like 80s and 90s here. Or whatever. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, anyway, that's Fern Gully, The Last Ray Forest, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.